The Apple Vision Pro is one of the most impressive pieces of tech I have ever used in my entire life. And at the same time, I am totally bored with it. I have no desire to put it on anymore. I'm definitely going to return it. And this has to be one of the most returned devices in Apple history. This device as it is right now is not for me personally, but I am so excited for the future. I want this device to succeed. I do not want Apple to give up on this because this has so much incredible potential. The hardware and the build quality of this product is incredible. I know for $3,500 to $4,000, it's extremely expensive, but I'm not sure it's really that overpriced. And using it and comparing it to other VR headsets, it still feels like a $4,000 product to me. The materials are the best I've ever felt. The image quality inside this thing is the best I've ever seen. The hand tracking is also completely unmatched. And Apple has really worked their magic to make this entire thing very intuitive so that anybody can pick it up. And within just a few minutes, you're gonna be navigating around this thing very effortlessly. The Apple Vision Pro is, as far as I know, the only headset that really wants you to live in your environment and all of the cameras are on all the time natively. You can turn these cameras off and go into these different environments if you want to, but Apple is really pushing for you to use this all the time while you're folding laundry or cooking food or working in the office. And the idea is, is that if you can see your surroundings, you never have to take this thing off. I believe one day that will be the future Future, it's just not quite there yet. When I first put this thing on, I noticed immediate eye strain. I'm talking about within like 20 to 30 seconds, my eyes started aching just a little bit. I did get over that, but what I didn't get over was just the overall weight and feeling of this thing on the front of my face, constantly pulling down. And of course, the biggest problem is that you're going to be viewing your entire world through very low resolution cameras. So yes, while it is possible to fold clothes while you're wearing this thing, I find it to be extremely uncomfortable. Now, when it comes to looks, this thing looks really goofy, but I just went snowboarding. And as I was looking at everyone wearing ski goggles, I realized, well, they are basically wearing Apple Vision Pros everywhere. Why does this guy look cool and this guy look goofy? Why does this person fit in and this person stand out? It just has to do with society, I guess, and what we're used to. And if everybody was walking around wearing these, maybe they would just look normal. I remember when the AirPods first came out and everybody said, those are the ugliest things we've ever seen. And now they're the most popular headset in the world. You see everybody wearing them all the time. Apple in the commercial has the dad wearing this thing to the kid's birthday party. And that's really weird. It's super creepy. It's creepy for everybody. It's creepy for people watching the weird dad. It's weird for the person wearing it because you feel straight, you know everybody's looking at you. It's really weird. And I don't know how much of that is you know, societal. We're just not used to it yet. Maybe we can get over that hump. I do not think this is the product to get over that hump. I mean, Apple in their commercial has, you know, people just casually wearing this in the office. I don't think that's gonna happen with this product. It will happen one day. I don't know if it's gonna be in 10 years or a thousand years from now. It will happen one day. I just don't know if this is the product for that. Not necessarily just because this looks stupid, but because it's just uncomfortable to wear for long periods of time and the video cameras that you're looking out of just aren't very high resolution. So talking to other people, just feels weird. Maybe it's gonna take a few iterations, high resolution video, high resolution screens inside, smaller form factor, and maybe over time it will become the norm. Um, but right now, if you're showing up to a birthday party wearing this, you're a weirdo. Everything that I've done with this headset, I've felt the exact same way. My initial response is, this is incredible. This is the best I've ever seen. This is the future, we are here. And then a couple minutes later, I go, ah, let's turn this off and see what else there is to do. One of the most impressive features of this product is the eye tracking. This thing knows exactly what you're looking at. And then to select anything, you just touch your fingers together. It's always watching your fingers out of cameras built into the bottom. And for the most part, this works really well. But one out of every 10 or 20 clicks, something goes wrong, it doesn't register that you've clicked, and it can become pretty frustrating. I mean, imagine using a mouse and every 10 or 20 clicks, 
it just doesn't work. You'd probably end up throwing the mouse across the room and buying another one. Well, currently that's what using Apple Vision Pro is like all the time. One of my favorite things to do with this headset is just to surf the internet, read interesting articles, check out Reddit, check out YouTube, watch videos, because the screens in this thing are absolutely beautiful. The resolution is fantastic, but every annoying click that doesn't register or when I'm trying to type something in by talking to it and it doesn't recognize what I'm saying exactly, or it's glitching out because it's not totally sure that I'm looking at the microphone signal. All of these things are just a little annoying and they add up to make me realize I just prefer doing this on my phone. There's this dinosaur encounter app that opens up this portal in your room and this dinosaur comes out and it's amazing. I mean, it's so crazy to see this. It really feels like this dinosaur is right in your face. I showed it to my wife. She was so freaked out. She couldn't even look at the dinosaur. She was just looking at her feet. I'm closing my eyes. I can't open them. <laughs> Watch it. It's cool. This is too much. It's not real. I know, it doesn't matter. It does. It doesn't matter. No, I broke it. But the whole thing is like three minutes and you're like, okay, that's cool. I guess I'll never do that again. One of the other big things that Apple pushed was this persona thing so that you can join FaceTime calls or you can join Zoom calls and it will mimic your face and you'll be this weird ghostly <laughs> digital representation of yourself. So I called my sister-in-law and although I couldn't record audio and I can't see my face in this video, I think you can get an idea of her response to my persona. And I believe my brother said something like, if this was 1990, that would be really cool, but this is 2024 and that looks horrible. I like that it says beta up there because they know it's bad. Now, when it comes to gaming, this headset is very lacking. You can't attach normal VR gaming controllers. You can attach a Bluetooth video game controller and play like iPad video games on it. But if you wanna play 3D VR games, you're going to have to get the few games that are currently available just for this headset on the App Store. And they're fun for a second and then you get bored after a few minutes and you don't ever wanna play again. The best VR game ever made and the reason to buy a VR headset is for Half-Life Alex. It's currently not available on this headset and you really need controllers to play it. So I don't even know how that would work. I have seen footage of people hacking it and kind of making it work, but it's still not a very good experience. And I feel like Apple really dropped the ball there. There's a lot of gamers who will spend any amount of money to play the newest, hottest game. And I just think Apple could have opened this up and let you plug in a Windows PC to it and do whatever you want over there. And they could have sold 10 times more of these but they've closed it off as usual and therefore it's really not a gaming machine at the moment. Now, when you read online what people are actually doing with this device, the number one thing is television and movies. And I watched the movies in this thing and it was pretty impressive. I have never seen a screen so large with so much dynamic range. I mean, obviously we've probably all seen movies in IMAX, the screen is gigantic, but the dynamic range is horrible. The screen is incredibly dimly lit. When you see a screen that is the size of an IMAX screen in your vision, which has the dynamic range of an OLED TV, it's pretty wild. I tested out a few different movies in this thing and I actually started noticing details in the movies that were kind of bothering me a little bit that I never would have noticed on a TV or a movie theater. Like if the cinematographer missed focus by just a little bit, maybe they missed the front eye and caught the back eye, I would never be able to see that on my TV. Not because my TV doesn't have the probably the exact same resolution, it's just because I'm not sitting this close to my TV. I'm sitting across the room on a sofa. The Apple Vision Pro is kind of like a movie screen made out of an OLED TV. It's very impressive to see, and I do understand why people say it's the pinnacle of movie watching, but for me personally, as somebody who, one, doesn't really watch that much TV or movies anymore, I don't think there's any way I could sit there with this thing on my face for two hours watching a movie. I got bored after a couple of minutes and I wanted to take it off even during my testing. Now, the future of video and maybe movies is this immersive video where it's filmed with 3D cameras and then when you watch it back with a 3D device, it's almost like you're there in person. And Apple made a few different videos 
that are free to watch. I wish I could show them to you, but Apple blocks the record feature while you're watching these. There's footage of this girl setting up a slack line between two mountains and then like walking between the two mountains and it feels like you're right there. Um, there's a video of Alicia Keys in the studio recording with all these musicians. It feels like you're standing right next to her and she's a real person. And uh, it's just a totally different viewing experience. And I find it incredibly compelling. However, the resolution on those videos is noticeably low. And I don't know, I haven't done the research to figure out what they were filmed in. I don't know if they were filmed in 4K or 8K. But the issue is when you shoot video and then you stretch it out to 180 degrees, I mean, imagine if you had a television and you had you know 4K resolution on the television and it's across the room, and then imagine you bring it right to your face so that you can see everything. You'd be able to see every pixel, right? And then be like, this, is, this doesn't look very good. And then imagine if you stretch it out even more so that it's like you can look literally everywhere and see everything. The pixels would be so stretched out at that point. It would feel less than you know 1080p HD resolution. And that's what these immersive videos look like to me. There was so much potential there. And I feel like, whoa, this is going to be the future but it feels like we've taken so many steps back. I mean, it feels like I'm watching a movie on like a VCR or something. Now this headset also lets you film in 3D. It's called immersive video, I think, or immersive photos. You can record in 3D using two cameras that are on the front of this thing. And again, it just feels so low res compared to everything else that you see in this headset. It's kind of jarring to see how sharp all of the text is. And then you try to watch back one of these immersive videos and you go like, oh, this feels like one of the first digital cameras ever made. I mean, if immersive video is going to be the future, we need at least 8K, if not a lot more than that, to fill up 180, if not 360 degree field of view. As a professional photographer and videographer, I haven't cared about resolution for the last five years or more. As long as the camera has over 20 megapixels, I'm good. As long as the video camera has 4K resolution, I'm good. But this changes everything, not because this is a super high resolution device. I think it's approximately 4K. It's just how you use it. When you're using a TV, you usually sit across the room. And so the majority of those pixels, you're not able to see them. But with this, if you want to take advantage of all of the resolution it has to offer, you have a tendency to make those screens as big as possible. And that's when you really notice low resolution video. All right, I've been using the Vision Pro for a few days now. I have been purposefully waiting to use what I think is the most valuable feature, especially for me, and that is using the Apple Vision Pro as a giant monitor uh, for my laptop. So if I was traveling, instead of having to pack up you know, multiple huge monitors, I could just pack up this. Let's see how this compares to my quad 4K monitor setup that I have right over there. If I make the screen the same size as my laptop screen, it just looks horrible. So low res, I can't even read the text. So you really do need to take advantage of being able to make this as large as you can to take advantage of the full resolution of each uh, screen and each eye. I love how big I can make this, first of all. But when you start making a screen this large, you need it to be curved. This corner up here is way further away than the center of the screen down here. And so I just feel like Apple has made a huge mistake by not giving you the option to curve this giant screen or at the very least have multiple screens and then we could tilt them towards ourselves like this. I would love to work on a screen this big. I just can't do it comfortably when it's not curved. Now, although this looks very sharp, it does not look nearly as sharp as my 4K monitors. That was better in some ways than I expected and worse in others. I think the first question I need to answer is, if I had to travel with just a laptop and I needed to do a lot of work, would I prefer working on the small laptop screen or a gigantic screen in the Apple Vision Pro? I think I would prefer to work on the laptop screen. Um, I know it's kind of hard to explain this, but even though the laptop screen is much smaller, the resolution is higher. Um, it's sharper, it's easier to look at. 
Um, I don't have to deal with as much eye strain as I do in the Apple Vision Pro. As it stands right now, it's not a bad experience, uh, and there's aspects of it that are just mind-blowing, and I can see the future, and I think it's gonna be incredible. But right now, with the way it is, I still would prefer to just work on my laptop screen. Now, I've been pretty critical of this device, but there was a couple of magical moments that I had with this thing that were pretty mind-blowing. And it just has to do with using this for a long enough period of time that you forget it's on your face. When you first put it on, everything's weird and different and you're looking through these low-res cameras, it's all you can think about. But if you wear it for like 30 minutes, for a split second, you might forget that this is on your face and those low resolution cameras just become your reality. And I found myself living in this world where it is the real world, but I am controlling these windows with my hands. And it was this profound moment of like, wow, I just got to feel and see the future. The only thing that I can compare this to and I don't know if anybody else had this experience or not, but I can remember when my buddy got the Nintendo, the very first NES on Christmas. I think I was like five or six years old and I went over to his house on Christmas morning and I'm watching him play this video game and then he passes me the controller and I don't think I had even heard of what a video game was yet. And I'm pressing the buttons and controlling this guy on the TV. I still can remember the way I felt to this day. It was like the coolest thing that had ever happened to me and this device gave me that again for a split second. I mean, very quickly after, you know, I was living in the future, I woke up and was like, oh, I can't read my phone anymore. Yeah, I'm wearing this thing or there's a light leak coming in the side or this hurts my nose or I'm sweaty, I gotta take this off. But for that split second, it was really incredible. The experience I had in this was so profound that it actually made me worried about the future of this product line because this has to be one of the most returned products in Apple history. I mean, everybody's been so excited to try this thing. Everybody knows Apple offers a two week return policy. This thing costs well over $4,000 after you pay for tax and upgrades and everything. So many people purchased it like me. They were blown away by it and then immediately realized, I just don't think I'll ever use this product. If Apple can make this just a little bit better, a little more comfortable, a little bit cheaper, a little less goofy looking. I feel like this is the future, but we just have to go a little bit further and this one is not it, but man, we are close. Each month for the next year, F-Stoppers is creating a new photography contest that is totally free to join. And for March, the genre is wedding photography. And I'm excited to say that our guest judge for this contest is going to be Pai Jerza himself. You probably know who he is, but if you don't, he's literally one of the most successful wedding photographers working today. Not only is he judging this contest, but he's putting up the first place prize, a $2,000 mentorship program that's going to last 12 months. If you have an interest in photography and you've been thinking about breaking into the wedding photography or portrait market, or you wanna take your business to the next level, this is definitely the program for you. Second place for this contest is going to be the Loop Deck CT Plus. This is an incredible customizable input device for Mac or PC. You can use this to speed up your editing or if you do online live streaming, this is going to make things so much easier. Third place is going to get a free tutorial from the F Stopper store and we're gonna keep up our momentum and discount another one of our tutorials significantly. This time it's going to be our wedding photography tutorial. This tutorial did come out a while ago, as you can tell by my gorgeous hair I used to have, but the majority of this information is still relevant today. I used to be a professional wedding photographer myself for almost 15 years and I lay everything I know out in this 14 hour tutorial. We've been selling it for years for $300. It's currently for sale for just 50 bucks.